Well, good morning. It's a beautiful day here in Mississippi. It's raining and cold. But the spring is coming. The spring is coming. Sitting back here in my prayer chair. And uh, I want to do continue our Bible study from the book of Mark. And I would admonish you to take and read the book of Mark. Just start reading it a few verses a day and spend some time with the Lord. You could fellowship. People uh, need to, we need to understand that, that uh, we could fellowship with God through his word. Now we could pray in, in prayer and meditation in the word. There are many ways, but just by sharing the word of God and uh, reading the word, meditating on it, the Lord could speak to us through that, his, his love letter to us. So let me continue here. Yesterday we were talking about the, uh, the ruler at the synagogue had come to Jesus and asked, asked Jesus to come to heal his daughter. And Jesus was on the way to go to the uh, Jairus' house to lay hands on his daughter and bring healing to her. On the way, he encountered a woman who'd had an issue of blood for 12 years. Had lost all her money. She spent all her money on physicians and grew no better, the Bible says. But she said in her, she said in her mind, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, which we talked about that yesterday. Go back and look at the, other lit, the video. The, the tally, the, the Jewish prayer shawl, the shawl that Jesus wore. A tallit, the, the tallit, remember the tzitzit? They represent the promises of God. And this is a, it was a, a thing that Jewish men wore, a tallit. It was a prayer shawl. They would cover their heads when they prayed. And again, this was a secret place. This was the closet the Bible talks about, that they were going into the presence of God. And it, once more, a disclaimer, I'm not Jewish in the natural. I am a Hebrew. The word Hebrew means one that crosses over. <laughs> That's literally what it means. So anyway, so I guess I am a Hebrew. I've crossed over from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light through the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's start reading here. I'm going to start verse, this is uh, Mark 5, uh, start verse 34, ending up with what Jesus said to the, uh, the lady with the issue of blood after she'd received her healing. And then Jesus said to her daughter, because you dared to believe your faith has healed you. I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. That's what you've got to get this out of your heart. Your faith in God's Word can bring healing to you. There's not going to be somebody around all the time to pray for you. Your pastor won't be there all the time to pray for you. Some evangelist, some healing evangelist is not always going to be there. Uh, thank God for the gifts of the Spirit. Thank God for uh, the Lord using people to, uh, to pray for other people and, and, and use their faith to help you along. But there comes a time you're going to have to learn to develop your own faith in the Word of God and engage the gate in your heart. You have gates You're in the center of your being. You have gates that come from the center of your heart where the glory of God dwells. And you've got to learn to engage that gate, that, that gate of faith that releases the glory that's in you. Remember Paul said, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, the confident expectation of the manifest presence of God. You have to, you develop this. It's like working out 
uh, develops your body. You work out by meditating in the Word of God and spending time with Him. Your, your faith will increase. The Lord talks about your faith increasing. Your faith in Him. We're, we were initially saved by the faith of Jesus. Jesus is the one that had the faith to go to the cross and that the Father was going to raise him from the dead. But we have to develop our faith also in his word in order to walk by faith. The Apostle Paul says we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. So developing your own faith is very uh, important. So, uh, People can, as, you, as, you are, as a, a young Christian or a new believer, the others can carry you with their faith. They can pray for you. You can pray for your children until they develop their faith. And, but the Lord always, always wants us to mature into a relationship where we're, we're closer and closer to Him. We come closer and closer to him to where we cut out the middleman. We don't have to go through someone else to get to God. The blood of Jesus has made you righteous. You need to understand who you are and your identity in Christ so that you understand that your faith in the word of God will activate the power of God to bring whatever is necessary in your life to fulfill your... Hey, hey, Doris. Fulfill your uh, your destiny. So Jesus said here in verse thirty four, He says, "Daughter, because you dared, and, it, and it's a, it, there, there's always you dared to believe. Faith is always an action. It's always an action. There, 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 are, there will always, when you walk by faith, there's always that that." How do you say it? That lingering thing there. Is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Your mind will tell you this. But your heart, if you listen to your heart, your heart will tell you that the Lord is not going to let you down. He's not going to, he's not going to uh, 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 let you down if you trust him. He said, daughter, because you dared to believe, your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. Jesus did not even know when that, when that lady came up in the press of the crowd and touched him. Jesus actually said, who touched me? It wasn't like Jesus Jesus did, did not initiate the healing. You've got to hear what I'm saying. He did not initiate. He didn't go out and say, well, I, I see this lady. She's got an issue of blood. I'm going to pray for her and get her healed. He did not. He was not even aware of her. It was she's the one that initiated the healing by her faith. She said it. She said to herself, she said, if I could just touch the hem, like I said, if I could just touch the promise of God, the, 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 the Lord, the, the, the prayer shawl he, he wore, he had a, he had a tallit, his tallit, the, the tallit in, the, in the, the little fringes on the hem of his garment represented the promises of God. And like I said, the old covenant, one of the promises of God is he would be Yahweh Yara, I mean uh, Yahweh uh, Rapha, the Lord that heals your physician. So she said, she took, she took a step of faith in what the what God had said in a covenant, and she initiated this healing by her faith. He said, "Your faith has healed you." And he said, "Now you go in peace in your heart and be free from your suffering." So Jesus made a declaration there, a prophetic declaration over her. She was healed by her own faith, but then she had the blessing of the Lord to go in, in peace, and that word peace is shalom, which means wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken, provision, protection, provision. She, he said, go in peace in your heart. Go in the peace that's in your heart and be free from your suffering. And before he had finished speaking, people arrived uh, from Jairus' house. Remember, he was on his way to the, to the synagogue leader's house to, to pray for his daughter. They pushed through the crowd to give Jairus the news. There's no need to trouble the master any longer. Your daughter has died. Wow. Jesus, you know, 
was on his way to pray for this little girl, and they received the news that she had died. Boy, you talk about people like to bring good news, don't they? Huh. There's no need to trouble your master any longer. Your daughter has died. But listen what Jesus did. He said, but Jesus refused to listen to what they were told and said to the Jewish official or the synagogue leader, he said, don't, listen, this is a this is key thing in your faith, in your walk, and your, if you're believing for healing especially, don't yield to fear. If you go to the doctor, you've got some kind of symptom, and the doctor tells you you've got cancer, you've got six months to live, let me tell you something. He, that doctor is not a prophet, <laughs> and he has no, no right to give you a death sentence when God has said you shall live and you shall not die. Who, whose word are you going to? You have to choose. You have to make a choice. The Lord gave you a free will. You have to make a choice. Who are you going to believe, the word of man or the word of God? Here is where you have to dare, like the woman with the issue of blood. You have to dare to believe. You have to step out in faith. Faith is, is not a noun. It is a verb. It is not a set of doctrines. It is an action where you act upon what God has said, what Yahweh has said in his word. It's either spoken to you in your spirit. Make sure. Now, make sure what he speaks into your spirit there's a lot of prophetic people out there that get words from God, hear from God, but make sure that that word lines up with the written word of God. The written word of God is your measuring stick. It is, it is your, uh, what you measure what God is speaking to you up against to make sure that you're not hearing something flaky or hearing something that's not God. I want to make that very clear. That's why you should feel, you should gorge yourself upon the Word of God. Fill yourself with the written Word so that you can immediately, when you hear the Word of the Lord, and I believe God speaks. I believe this, people are prophetic. I believe all God's people are prophetic. I believe that, that that's part of the covenant that he, would, that he would speak to us. He would put His laws in our minds and in our hearts. He would speak to us. But you need to understand, we've got the blessing of having the Word of God written down. We take the written Word, fill yourself with that Word, fill yourself with that Word, and then when the Lord speaks to you, and He will speak to you a rhema word, a spoken word into your spirit, just, just make sure it lines up with what's, what's written so you won't get off and get flaky. Because there's plenty of flaky people out there. Amen. And, and, and they're good people, but they're still flaky. Amen. He said, he said, so they, this is what Jesus said. And this is word, the word for the day. Don't yield to fear. All you need to do is keep on believing. Keep on believing. So they left for his home, but Jesus didn't allow anyone to go with him except Peter and his two brothers, Jacob and John. That old lady, this has been about, oh gosh, 11 years ago. I was out mowing the, uh, I cut the, I mowed the grass on our church property. We have eight acres of property. I kept maintaining it. And uh, I was out there cutting the grass, and, a, and a, a young man pulled up in a truck, and I recognized him as the son of a lady who attended our church. And this lady had, uh, he told me, he said, he said, Mom's died. She's died. I, we need you to come to the hospital. I thought it was a little late, you know, she's, she's already dead, but I, I, you know, I wanted to do the pastoral thing, and I went, and we got, I went and got my wife, and, and we went to the hospital, and the strange thing, I've never had this happen before, they took us back to the, uh, uh, where they keep the bodies, and they had her on a slab, and had her covered up, and she was dead, and I, I, I at that time in my life, I thought, this lady, she's died. She shouldn't be dead. I thought, I should pray for her. And I should raise her from the dead. But the room was filled 
with her family. They were grieving, and they were, they, they, they were most of them weren't Christians. Well, none of them were Christians. They weren't believers. And the room was it was so filled with an atmosphere of doubt and unbelief and and uh, and sorrow and and anger that this had happened. That that it it uh, I just didn't have it. I didn't have it. I, I, I just didn't do it. I couldn't pray for her. I didn't pray for her. I guess I could have, but it was so much unbelief. But it says here Jesus actually said, he said, he didn't take anyone with him except Peter and his two brothers, James and John, or Jacob and John. Why? Why? People ask that. You know, you go into the hospital. I've gone to hospitals to pray for people. For healing, and uh, and I sometimes I've actually put people. I, I've asked them kindly. I haven't been rude to them. I've asked, "Would you would you mind stepping outside uh, before while we pray?" Uh, because just simply because the, an atmosphere of unbelief around you will uh, intimidate you. It won't stop God. God's all powerful, and He can do. You know, He the power of God's there to raise the dead. But it's, it's our faith, it's our faith that gets intimidated by the unbelief that surrounds us. So if you stay in an atmosphere of unbelief, it's not going to, uh, your faith's not going to develop to the point where you do the greater works that God's called us to do. Even in a church, in a, a local church, we want to develop a, an atmosphere of, of faith, an atmosphere of, of, of trust in God to the point where uh, God can manifest himself uh, through the Holy Spirit and through his, through his angels, can manifest himself, but he cannot, I, I, I go back to that, God can do anything he wants to, but I'm telling you, that he, he has to see something that looks like him before he shows up. And, and God is a God of faith. And when he sees faith, he's attracted to faith. When he sees unbelief, he's repelled by it. Unbelief repels the, the things of heaven. Faith attracts the things of heaven. Faith is an, is an attractor. You, your confession, what you say out of your mouth every day, your your, your, your statements of, 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 of belief in what God has said about you, your words that come out of your mouth, that come from your heart, your declarations, not, not some religious thing that you're doing, but something that's coming out of your heart because you fellowship with the Father and you've had time, spent time with God and, 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 and it's coming, it's, it's, you're so full, you're bubbling up. Let me tell you something, angels are attracted to that. They're attracted to you worshiping the Father. They're drawn to it. Heaven, if you just get a picture of this, heaven looks for something that looks like it. The things of heaven are looking for things. Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's why when there's an atmosphere of faith and an atmosphere of worship and and, 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 and an atmosphere in your home or, or just around you where you're speaking the word. I, I ain't, let me tell you something about angels. I've had some dealing with angels. Angels will, will, will only do what the Father says. If you're saying something that's contrary to what the Father has said, something that's contrary to his word, they're not going to pay any attention to you. They'll stick with you. They're, you know, they'll do their job. But, but give them a break. Give them something to work with. Give them words to work with. Give them something that, that, that shows them that you're lining up with the, 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 the heavenly realm so that they can do their job to assist you in your uh, commission here on the earth. Your, your, your oh, shikalabara what God, the Lord has called you to do here on earth. Give them something. Heaven is looking for something on earth that looks like heaven. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth, looking for someone that he can show himself strong to. That's in the Old, Old Testament, but it's true even now. The eyes of the Lord, he's looking and watching for someone, someone he can bless. 
But I'm telling you right now, he's not, he's, he's looking, but he's not, he's not going to bless what don't look like heaven. Now, I'm getting off. I'm sorry. Forgive me. So when they arrived at the home, the ruler of the synagogue, they encountered a noisy uproar among people, and they were all weeping and wailing. And upon entering the home, Jesus said to them, he said to them, why all this grief and weeping? You understand. That's why this is the poor I'm making. He's looking for something that looks like heaven. He said, why all this grief and weeping? Don't you know the girl is not dead? She's merely asleep. Now, we've already know the girl's if in the natural, she's dead. But, God, but Jesus is calling things that be not as though they were. He's seeing into her future. He's seeing her destiny. And he's saying, no, this, this death has come to intervene and to, it's a work of the enemy to stop this child's destiny. And I'll not have it. I'll not have it. He said, don't you know the girl's not dead? She's merely asleep. Then everyone began to ridicule and make fun of him. People are going to make fun of you if you start acting like God acts. It's contrary. The world hates. The world system hates the people of the, in the world. They don't hate those people. Those people need Jesus. But I'm telling you, that don't expect anything out of them. That's all, that's all they know. They began to ridicule and make fun of Jesus. But he threw them all outside. Let me tell you something about the, the meek and gentle Jesus. A lot of you <laughs> follow. Jesus when, when he came down to business, when he came down to life and death, he could get rough. He threw them out. He threw them out. And I'm not saying you need to be rude and be ugly to people. But if, if it comes down to somebody's going to live or die, you need to take care of business. He threw them all outside. Then he took the child's father and mother and the three disciples and went into the room where the girl was lying. And he tenderly clasped the child's hand in his and said to her in Aramaic, and that's what Jesus spoke. He spoke Aramaic. He said, oh, shikala. He said, Talitha Kumai. Now, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not, like I said, I'm just a boy from Mississippi. Talitha Kumai, which means little girl, wake up from the sleep of death. Wake up from the sleep of death. Instantly, the 12 year old girl, and in, 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 it's interesting to me that she was 12 years old, and the woman that Jesus had just, uh, that had been healed by faith, had been sick for 12 years. What's all that about? I don't know. We'll get into that later. Instantly, the 12 year old girl sat up, stood to her feet, and started walking around the room. And everyone was overcome with astonishment in seeing this miracle. Now, these people, they were all saying, ridiculing Jesus one minute, stopped ridiculing him when she got up off her deathbed and started walking. And Jesus had to bring her, had them bring her something to eat. And he repeatedly cautioned them that they were to tell no one about what had happened. Jesus was not there to bring glory to himself. If we'd have raised somebody from the dead, we'd have been on television the next day promoting our ministry. We'd have started a 501C corporation and started a ministry and gone on the road. But Jesus would not like that. He came to bring glory to the Father, not to himself. Too many people out there promoting themselves. I am not promoting myself on Facebook. I'm teaching the Word of God because God told me to. But I appreciate you liking me, and I appreciate you sharing the word. Now, I want to go back. One, one thing, touch on this, this, word, this, this Aramaic word that Jesus said, Talitha Kumai, which here is interpreted, it says, little girl, wake up from the sleep of death. This Passion Translation has a, uh, has a, 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 a footnote that, that you could, that I, I, I think, I think it's, it may be right. It may be right. He said, he, I'm going to read from what he says, his footnote about this. He said, the Aramaic word talitha can also mean little lamb. The Greek word used here is koration, which means, uh, is similar to sweetheart. The tenderness of this moment is obvious in the text. However, listen, some Hebrew scholars find the word talitha 
Talitha or Talitha. This is actually what my, my second daughter's middle name is Talitha. The Lord had me name her Talitha because of this story. Talitha, he said, listen, he said, the Hebrew scholars said the root word could point to the talent. That he was actually saying, Jesus and saying, little girl, arise. He was saying, arise to my talit. Arise to the promise of God. See, G that was Jesus' faith right there. Jesus' faith in the promises of the Father. He said, arise to my talent. Arise to my to, to these promises represented by these little strings that the Jewish men wore on their prayer shawls. Listen to what he said. He said, little girl, this would make you say, little girl, under the prayer cloak, under my prayer cloak, this is a prayer cloak, a tallit. He said, under my prayer cloak, arise. The friend's tallit had already been touched by the woman who received her healing previously in this chapter. So, it, so the, he God's progressively bring, bringing through Jesus this message that about healing. Healing is based on the promises and the covenant, the covenant promises. Now, you remember Jesus is operating under the old covenant because he hadn't gone to the cross yet, so there was no a new covenant yet. But he, he was pointing constantly. He went, first the woman touched the, the hem of the garment, she was touching the word of God. He, she touched by faith and she was healed. And then Jesus went to the little girl. The little girl couldn't, obviously, she could not exercise any faith because she was dead. So Jesus exercised his faith. And he, and he said to her, arise to the covering of my prayer shawl. Arise to the promises of God. The promises of God with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. That's Psalms 91. It says, the, the, the latter, the, almost the last verse of Psalm 91 is this, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. In the Hebrew, that word salvation is Yeshua. Arise to me, I'll show you my Yeshua, Jesus. I'll show you my Jesus. Glory to God. That's part of abiding in the secret place of the Most High God. Oh, my God. I, this, the Word of God is so good. I get turned on. I tell you what. And like I say, you don't have to go out and get yourself a talent and become a Jew. You're not a, you know. <laughs> but this is a teaching aid. This is something to help teach, teach us that, that, that we need this kind of stuff. We need these, these, these things to teach us, to help us learn the, the truth of the reality of the invisible kingdom of God and bring it into manifestation on the on the earth. Uh, I'm glad to hear y'all. I'm not ignoring y'all. I see Doris on there. I, I've seen a lot of folks. From, uh, praise God for you. Uh, I just get caught up. Anyway, got to go. I want to pray with you today. I pray you, I just, man, I just pray you have a, a blessed, the blessed day, a blessed day. Amen. A ask the Holy Spirit to help you create an atmosphere around you that looks like heaven so that heaven will be attracted to you. And, and therefore, the blessings of the Lord will be attracted to you. The angels of Almighty God that, m that are sent to minister for the heirs of salvation will be attracted to you and bring, bring treasure to you. Bring, meet your need. Bring healing to you. Bring blessing to you. Glory to God. The, the Lord. <laughs> the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And the Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord give you grace, empowerment from on high. And the Lord give you shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. God bless you. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. She, listen, I encourage you. Everybody, sh keep sharing this stuff. Share this stuff. I'm not promoting myself. I'm telling you, I'm not. Share this stuff. Somebody needs to hear this word. They need this word. They need this word. Amen. 
And go to go to YouTube. Go to uh, I, I've got a YouTube channel. It's, it's Richard. Ch just go to Richard Chambliss. It's Kingdom Mysteries Revealed. Go there. The, the the Sunday morning videos of our church services are posted there. This will be posted there, and you can share that. And uh, uh, I, I seem to get more views uh, or more people watching the teaching on Facebook than than YouTube. I don't know what's up with that, but anyway, it's increasing. So we're going to increase the kingdom. And like I say, you could be an evangelist. You could help spread just by pushing a button that says share. You could be you could you could touch somebody's life and don't ever underestimate the power of the word of God and the Holy Spirit is watching over this word to perform it and it will not return void. I speak healing right now. In Jesus' name, I agree with you for healing for your body in the name of Jesus. No cancer, no heart disease, no arthritis, no nothing the enemy can throw at you can overcome the blood of the faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my story. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. God bless you, and see you later. Like and share. Amen.